Hello everyone, happy Tuesday, and welcome to another week and another episode of Quandaries and Sundries. I've talked about climate change in the past, and with the United Nations 2021 climate conference over, I thought I would dedicate a full episode to what is climate change? What are greenhouse gases? What is the ozone problem? So I will try to tackle as much as I can about the topic today. Now, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to climate change. Many people say it's fake news and why the United Nations considers it the greatest threat to our survival as a species. But I'm not going to be taking any political sides, whether you think it's real or fake, whether you're a Democrat or Republican. I'm going at this from the perspective of the science alone and just the facts. So I hope you enjoy it and come away from this with maybe a little something or maybe you learn something new. Now at its most basic level, climate change, or also known as global warming, is a rapid shift in the climate of our planet brought on by a factor that causes our planet to go into a fever state. Let's start with a word I bet you hear all the time. Greenhouse gases. Well, what are they? Well, to start off, they're completely natural. They exist in our atmosphere to protect us from the radiation and solar winds produced by the sun that come towards our planet. These various gases collectively absorb the sun's radiation and in turn warm our planet. The most common of these gases are water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and ozone. Without these gases doing their job, our planet's surface would drop from the normal average of 59 Fahrenheit or 50 Celsius to 0 Fahrenheit or negative 18 Celsius. Without this balance, our planet would go out of whack and become unstable. And that's exactly what has happened. And what we have been witnessing with the extreme wildfires, rising ocean levels, tsunamis, hurricanes, and various other natural disasters. But I might touch on those later. Let's get back to greenhouse gases. Since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, we're talking about 1750 to 2021, the carbon dioxide in our atmosphere has increased by 50%, meaning a greater absorption of radiation causing the surface of our planet to heat up to levels that become dangerous for us as humans and various other species of animals and plants. And what makes this extremely dangerous is that it's because of our actions that this is happening. Now what I want to debunk is a common argument I see people talk about when bringing up climate change, and that's the fact that there have been numerous periods in our planet's history where climate change caused mass extinctions on our planet. And also, hey, no humans were around there, and dinosaurs were driving cars, so global warming is natural. Well, yes and no. For various reasons, at different points in the billions upon billions of years the Earth has been alive, especially during the first few billion years while the planet was still forming and cooling, The climate was changing from time to time, and the planet goes through different phases of cooling and warming. It is completely natural, but there is nothing natural about what we are expecting now. But first, if we look at various major and minor extinction events in the history of our planet that involved climate shifts, in one way or another, it all boils down to an increase of carbon dioxide, just as we see now in our current predicament. The various culprits back then were massive volcano eruptions caused by tectonic shifts or volcanic eruptions melting massive amounts of ice causing a massive release of natural gas and fossil fuels from within the ice. Or my favorite reason, various species of bacteria and microbes that consume and produce gases such as methane, carbon dioxide, and oxygen rapidly breeding to the point their existence throws the ecosystem and the atmosphere out of whack through carbon emissions. I talked about them last week. So two points to take away from this. One, yes, climate change and the earth heating up is natural, but when comparing it to what we are going through now, I find ridiculous. 
it's just like saying that Germans dropping bombs in the thousands into Allied country cities during World War II from planes is the same as one atomic bomb dropped on Japan. While they both cause destruction, and they are both tragedies, one is deadlier than the other. We are releasing fossil fuels and various emissions into the atmosphere at a rate that greatly surpasses what the planet has gone through in the past. And point number two. I don't find comparing our planet's atmosphere to billions of years ago necessary. Sure, it's a good thing to keep in mind as an example, but over billions of years, the Earth goes through pe different periods that allow different species and different biomes to function and thrive in ways they don't today. Billions of years ago, I mean, Antarctica was a lush jungle, but that doesn't mean what we are doing to the atmosphere is good now. But first, before we get back into your regularly scheduled content, if you're enjoying my content, and if you're listening on YouTube, I really appreciate if you give this video a like, a comment, and if you're new to my content, consider subscribing. Because at least 50% of the people who watch have not subscribed. And do not forget to hit that little bell icon so you can be notified whenever I post something new. Or if you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or whatever audio platform you're listening to this on, consider giving me a follow. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. Now let's get right into the rest of the episode. Speaking of atmosphere, let's talk about another common topic around global warming, the ozone layer. The ozone layer is extremely important because it is a layer of our atmosphere that absorbs the most radiation from the sun. It's our kind of radiation shield and first line of defense. So one could imagine how dangerous it could get if we have a hole in the ozone or the ozone starts depleting. This depletion is caused by the release of heliocarbons or chemically manufactured chemicals into the atmosphere. These ozone depleting substances or ODS are used in all forms of manufacturing from various types of industrial strength refrigerants, solvents, and propellants. They're what you see coming out of smokestacks of factories. They're in everything from producing plastics to pesticides to converting natural gas and crude oil into usable gas for our vehicles. The winds then carry them into the upper atmosphere, and once they reach the ozone layer, they are broken down, release all their atoms via the sun's rays, and they transform the ozone into oxygen, causing a hole in that layer. As our ozone depletes, we have started to see an increase in cataracts, blindness, sunburns, and skin cancer because of the sun's ultraviolet rays seeping through. Before we end, I just want to touch on the effects global warming will have in the next hundred years. I know I've mentioned in the past, but I kind of want to wrap everything up into a nice package and just bring it all together. Now, we always hear about the ice melting in the North Pole and Northern Hemisphere, but we don't really talk about why it's worse in those locations. We talk about the ozone layer having a hole and depleting. What we don't talk about is the fact that these locations are where the ozone becomes the thinnest. At both of the Earth poles, a phenomenon known as the polar vortex takes place. A jet stream of cold air gathers around the poles in the surrounding regions, causing massive wind pressures at the poles and frigid temperatures. This causes the ozone depletion substances I mentioned earlier to become trapped in the stream and concentrated on the ozone above the poles, causing the famous holes above the poles. God, I've said poles way too many times. Sorry about that. And by massive wind speed, I mean massive. 200 miles per hour or 320 kilometers per hour have been clocked at the poles. And the hole in the ozone leads to rising ocean levels and ice melting. The less ozone to protect the planet from being overheated at the poles means the more rays from the sun are getting through and melting the ice in the Arctic and will in turn cause rising sea levels, which is quite the grave concern. I know I said I wanted to leave on that, but I honestly want to leave on just one more quick thing. An interesting thought. While the ozone help regulates the amount of sun the planet is exposed to, the reason warm water reaches the various corners of the planet is thanks to the Gulf Stream, one of the various streams and currents that help propel warm water around the planet. But by slowing them down, 
the Earth will in turn cool down. And interestingly, they have a main enemy, fresh water. Fresh water slows down the streams and currents, causing a cooling of the planet. But where would we get so much fresh water from? Well, how about all the melting ice in the Arctic? And interestingly, this happened not too long ago. The ice melted like this in the Middle Ages, not as bad as it is now, resulting in what scientists call the Little Ice Age. Between the 16th century and 19th century, the Earth went through a slight cooling period. I'm not talking about full-blown ice age, but just a slight dip in cooling. I always looked at these beautiful paintings from the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries. Some great colonial American ones showing these beautiful wintry scenes. And that was because of the Little Ice Age. The question is, when will it happen next? Can we repeat it? And if we are far too gone with all the damage that has been done to the atmosphere and the ozone? Quite the interesting thought. Well, that is all I got for today. I want to thank you again for listening. And I want to thank you again for joining me for another episode. I would love to know what you think and how I can improve this show. After all, I do this all for you. So head over to my social media or just the comments if you're watching the YouTube version and let me know. Thanks so much and do not forget to share this to all those or anyone in your life who could use a scientific moment in theirs. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow for another episode of Quandaries and Sundries. This is Van Masterson signing off. Till next time.